Okay, so now let's talk about um, shapes of molecules. So when covalent molecules form, the atoms arrange themselves so that the valence electrons are spaced. I'm going to highlight this. Valence electrons are spaced as far apart as possible. Okay, this idea is called the Vesper theory. The Vesper theory stands for valence shell electron pair repulsion. So today we're talking about the shapes of these molecules, of these covalent bonds that they form. And um, we're going to look at the different shapes that they form. It's always a good idea, you guys, to be using the Lewis dot structure to help you understand how these shapes are formed. So um, all you really need for today's lecture is you need your notes, a highlighter, good pen or pencil to write with. And, um, and be able to see these shapes in a 3D form. So um, you are going to be learning a total of seven shapes today. And really what we're looking at as far as your notes go is that we're looking at molecular geometry. So this right here in the middle, this um, shapes, go ahead and just draw a line through it because we're really not going to be looking at that in particular. Okay, so the first shape that we're going to come across is linear. So if I give you the element CO2, okay, we're going to draw our Lewis dot structure. And when we do, this is how our Lewis dot structure now looks. Okay, now notice right here that this molecule is in a straight line. So these electrons are trying to be as far apart from one another as they possibly can be. So you're looking at, in this case, you're looking at the bonding element group. There are two bonding elements. And there are zero lone pairs at least around the central atom, which is carbon in this case. So if we look at this, it's going to form a linear structure. This is an example oops, of a linear structure. It is going straight across. It's linear. It's in a straight line. Okay, so um, this would be a linear structure. Notice that the distance right here from, um, from this molecule all the way to this molecule would be a total of 180 degrees. Okay, so you're looking at that. <clears throat> the next element we want to look at is BH3, and the shape that we're going to look at is trigonal planar. Now, if you look at the shape, the trigonal planar, let me find it for you. So, if we draw the Lewis dot structure of this particular molecule, we've got boron in the middle and hydrogen trying to be as far apart from one another would form a shape that is very similar in this case. And notice, you guys, that the hydrogens, I'll put the hydrogens here to give you an, an idea. These hydrogens are now far apart from each other as much as they possibly can be. So in total, if you're looking at this, they are always 120 de degrees away from each other. So I'm hoping if I can make this zoom out. Hmm. Okay, so if you look at this shape here now, notice that each of the hydrogen um, atom is far away from one, one another. So they're in a total of 120 degrees away from one another. And that's about as far apart that they can get equal distance from one another. Okay. Okay, so now let's look at the next one. The next one that we're looking at is called tetrahedral. And so this is tetrahedral. An example of a tetrahedral molecule would be CCl4. Okay, so we're going to once again draw our um, Lewis dot structure. In this case, we've got carbon that is right in the middle. And we've got chlorine. We've got, and we're going to make this, to show that it is front and back, we're going to use the, um, 
the regular lines to show that it is um, it's it's in the front but something that is really coming out towards us we're going to make it into a darker line and then something that is far away in behind hiding away we're going to make it into um, dash lines okay so this is to say that these two carbons are coming out and this is further away so the distance from each one of these chlorines is 109.5 degrees so if we look at it in this tetrahedral model if you look at it for each of the chlorine this is a hundred a hundred nine point five degrees away from each other okay so they are 105 and if we want even from these two at the bottom they're 105 degrees away 109.5 degrees away from one another okay so that would be called a tetrahedral it's a tetrahedral because there are four areas okay one two three four the one above us which is called trigonal planar that is because it is a triangle that shows up in one plane okay so the next one we have is called trigonal pyramidal and let's the example of trigonal pyramidal that i want to show you is ammonia NH3. And of course, once again, you guys, if we're looking at the bonding element group, um, electron groups, this will have three bonding electrons with one lone pair. So when we draw our Lewis dot structure for this, it would be nitrogen here. And then of course, we have a hydrogen that is sort of in the back, a hydrogen that is that we can see, but a hydrogen that is actually coming straight at us. Okay. And then you know that nitrogen's got these lone pairs, so it's got one lone pair. All the others so far have been zero lone pairs. So what happens is that this lone pair actually has a tendency to push all of the other hydrogens down. And so these hydrogens end up being a lot closer to each other than they really want to, but it is these, this lone pair that is pushing the other hydrogens down. So there's a greater um, distance between the lone pair and the hydrogens, but the hydrogen, and there's less distance between the hydrogens themselves. Okay, so if we are looking at this, it would look something like this. So you've got the hydrogens that are 107 degrees from one another, and this is where your lone pair is. So what's going to happen is that this lone pair is actually going to end up pushing all the other hydrogens down, pushing all the other electrons, because this lone pair, the electrons that are here, the lone pair electrons, um, are going to push all the other electrons the um, down where the hydrogens are, okay? So this is going to be between the hydrogens, 107, um, 107 degrees. Okay, so now let's look at another one. We're looking at the bent, uh, the bent uh, um, picture now. This is the good old water is a great example of a bent molecule. So in this case, water has um, the bonding electron groups. There are two bonding electron groups with two lone pairs. So if we draw our Lewis dot structure, we would get something like this. Again, you guys, so for the, for the one before, the ammonia, if you want to understand what these lone pairs are doing, they're pushing all the ele other electrons down, you can draw a balloon. In this case, we're going to draw ears around a lone pair because these two lone pairs are now pushing everything down. They're pushing the other hydrogens down. Um, remember that um, these electrons are... Um, they're, they're negatively charged, so they're not going to be attracted to one another. They're going to repel one another. That's why these lone pairs are pushing the other electrons down, because they are trying to repel. That's the same case uh, with the trigonal pyramidal, that they, this lone pair electron is pushing the other hydrogens down, because it's repelling against the other electrons here. Okay, So in this case, you're going to get a molecule 
that looks something like this. It is bent in shape. So it actually looks like it's just bent hanging at the bottom. And then you have two lone pairs right here that are repelling the other electrons, causing the electrons of the hydrogen um, to be pushed down. Okay, so this is a bent shape. Um, real quick, going back to trigonal pyramidal, remember that this is the triangle, and you can actually see the triangle in this case, the trigonal the triangle and then this triangle will form a pyramid once it comes up because it still needs to form um, go up and bond it, it's going to go up the shape of it okay okay so the next one we have is something called trigonal biopyramidal and my example is let me do it in the other color pcl5 for this one, we have our, we have five bonding electron groups and we have zero lone pairs. So if we draw our Lewis dot structure, in this case, we would have phosphorus in the middle and then we would have chlorine surrounding it. So we would have chlorine here, chlorine at the bottom, chlorine right here, then we would have chlorine way in the back that's what this is and then a chlorine that is just blatantly coming at us sticking it in the very front chlorine okay keep in mind that each one of these chlorine they have their lone pairs also in a Lewis dot structure you always need to draw the lone pairs of each element that is present okay so in this case we've got uh, um, phosphorus with five chlorine and if we look at it, the shape of this molecule is a little different than the other molecules. So if we look at the shape here, if you look at it, well, let me, let me see if I can get you a better angle. Okay, so this is the best I can do. So here's your phosphorus and here are your five chlorines. One, two, three, four, five. Notice that these chlorines, there isn't a single lone pair. And these chlorines, they're trying to separate from one another because they also have their lone pairs. So they're repelling against the other chlorines in the molecule. So they're trying to space, and this is the best shape that they get, the space that they can actually come across. So if we look at, um, according to your picture, you've got the two chlorines on top. So if we look at that, we've got, you can actually see it, the two chlorines, the top and the bottom chlorine. These two chlorine happen to be a total distance of 180 degrees from one another. And you can see that because they're in a straight line. I'm going to tilt it a little bit, but if you look at these two, they're in a straight line, so it's 180 degrees. Now, if we look at these two chlorine from one another, this is a, well, let me tilt it a little bit, these two chlorine, they are a right angle from one another. So this would actually be 90 degrees that we have here. So in my notes, I'm going to put this, these two are going to be 90 degrees. So, and now if we look at the chlorine that's, um, these two chlorines, this, this one and this one, if we look at these two chlorine, they're not necessarily 90 degrees from one another, but they're a little bit more. That's because the angle between these two right here happens to be 120 degrees, okay? 120 degrees, okay? So this is called a trigonal biopyramidal because you can, if you look at the shape, you can see the triangle that it forms, okay? It's a pyramidal because it's a pyramid, you can actually form a pyramid that is going up and it's bipyramidal because guess what it's got another one exactly the same that forms a pyramid at the bottom also okay so it forms a pyramid so this is a, a bipyramidal there's a pyramid on top with this with this chlorine and there's a pyramid at the bottom that it formed with the triangle 
So this top part forms a pyramid with these three triangles, and this bottom chlorine forms a pyramid with the, with the same um, chlorines of the triangle, okay? So you can actually see that in this case. So this would be a trigonal bipyramidal. And keep in mind that it has five, sorry, let me fix that. It's got five bonding, um, bonding groups, electron bonding groups, but it's got zero lone pair. The last one that I want to talk to you about is SF6. So we've got, um, again, we're going to draw a Lewis dot structure. So sulfur is right in the middle. And then, of course, you guys, we're going to draw our fluorine. Okay. Now to represent the fluorine in the back, I'm going to draw my dash lines to represent the fluorine that's just coming straight at us it is going to be a dark line. Keep in mind, you guys, that fluorine has lone pairs, so we need to draw all of those lone pairs because those lone pairs are actually what is driving um, those electrons away from one another. So the lone pairs of fluorine are actually pushing the ele other electrons away, okay? So if we look at this, and I've got a picture right here. Okay, so I think I got the camera angle just the right way. So this is the sulfur with the six, uh, um, the sulfur with the six fluorines. One, two, three, four, five, and then six, one at the bottom right here. So six fluorine. Now notice in this case, this is called the octahedral. And other than the fact that it's got um, the six fluorines in it, you can tell that um, these fluorines right here, they are a distance apart from one another. So each one of these is at a right angle. Um, so we say, and you can probably see it here, so this would be at a 90 degree angle um, from one another. That's what we'll say in our picture right here. Say so that's 90 degrees, because you can actually see it here that this is 90 degrees from one another. And these two are 90 degrees from one another. Now, as far as the distance goes between this fluorine and the fluorine that's at the bottom right here, this is a total of 180 degrees, because it's a straight line. So you can see that. 180 degrees, okay? And um, so this is an octahedral because these will form a shape that's very similar to an octagon, okay? With the six fluorines that are around here. So let me go back and get the camera as close as possible to the pictures that we have here. So you've got, um, right here, the 90 degrees that's between each one. So this would be 90 degrees, these two fluorines would be 90 degrees, this would be 90 degrees, and this would be 90 degrees. Keep in mind that these two fluorines are one is far away. So if we're looking at this, this fluorine is far away, and this fluorine happens to be close by. And that's what we have here. We have here, this fluorine is close by, and this fluorine is far away. But you have your one, two, three, four that are present. So before I conclude our lecture for today, I just want to go back because I did not include this angle with you guys. But I want to go back and talk about the bent. So the bent would be between the two hydrogens. The angle that it would form is 104.5 degrees. Okay. So, okay. So this concludes our lecture for shapes of molecules. And I hope that this helped you understand and even visualize how these shapes look. So it's always a good idea to draw the Lewis dot structure first. And if you can start drawing the Lewis dot structure into these molecular shapes, you should be able to see how these, um, how these um, shapes actually form around the molecule. Okay. Well, I'll see you guys later. Thank you.